Hi, Mark. What does the name training between the ears mean? Uh, what a cool question. So, especially in traditional training, um, you know, that uh, tends to be more force oriented and whatnot. Um, but also true in today's purely positive training or, or more positive training that a lot of people are doing. Um, what tends to mostly be focused on is what the dog actually does. So as an example, making the dog sit, making the dog go to place, making the dog heal, uh, whether that's done by force or reward, um, is really focused on, I think, a very shallow level of interaction with the dog. If we think about most of the things that a dog has problems with, um, the reason it has a problem is because of its emotional state relative to that thing. So it's overexcited when it sees people or other dogs. Maybe it's fearful or aggressive when it sees those kind of things. Uh, wants to chase and kill squirrels. Um, it's hyperactive. You know, doesn't know how to calm itself down and control itself, whatever it might be. Um, if we just focus on getting the sit, the down, you know, going to place, whatever else it might be, that's a really shallow relationship. Um, if we learn to focus on the idea that behavior comes from emotions and thoughts, and we learn how to understand more about the emotions and thoughts of the animal, and how to manipulate for the animal's benefit the emotions and thoughts of the animals, then we're really working where behavior uh, comes from, which is between the ears. So the basic idea is, is that an animal never does anything without either having an emotion relative to it first or a thought. Commonly both, but there are things that get classically conditioned emotionally where the animal responds without necessarily thinking through what it's going to do. So it's not necessarily thinking, is this a good thing for me to do or a bad thing. Um, certainly in reward-based training, the whole idea is, oh, the animal's thinking, what am I going to get out of this? Um, but the real idea there is, is that everything happens in the brain before it becomes external. And also uh, that everything feeds back to the brain. So if I give the dog a piece of food in response to doing something I like, where the reward actually happens is not on the dog's tongue or in his nose or in its stomach, it's between his ears, it's in his brain that he really um, crystallizes that, hey, that was rewarding and that was good. So the idea of training between the ears is the idea that's really where everything is happening with the dog. What does it think about things? How does it feel about things? Um, and then all the behavior flows from that. So if we focus at that level uh, with what's going on with the dog, it's amazing how quick and easy it becomes not only to change behavior, but to change the dog. Um, one of the problems with a lot of training is you change behavior in a way that, on some level, you have to always be doing that thing for the dog. Of course, a very obvious example of that would be teaching a dog to greet people. We see dogs all the time. They were trained three years ago. Goes up to greet people, they're still telling the dog to sit. Why can't a dog just learn to go up and greet somebody in a way that works for people and works for the dog? Uh, if we think about how the dog puts together its emotions, its thoughts, and its behavior, uh, that lead to what does it do in that situation, then we can interact with the dog on a whole different level and we can just change the dog to where now he just greets people well. He likes it, we like it, works good for everyone. Thank you.